Hey guys, welcome to another Predictor Restoration Tips installment. This time, maybe not the most exciting of topics, but one worthy of discussion, and that is wires. In particular, what type of wire to use where if you need to make repairs. Most of the wiring in these sets looks like this. It has two layers of insulation to it. The outer is, seems to be a wax impregnated cloth type and the interior is more well it's sort of like a woven plasticky material and then finally the interior is solid core tinned copper wire I believe it is 24 gauge some of the wiring is 22 or 20 gauge that would be for the filament supply. So this is a wiring you see running to the control clusters and to most of the points on the board. If you need to replace this, because over time it does get brittle and nasty, and notice how much yellower this is compared to this. This was very likely around heavy smokers for a long time, which can degrade it. Uh, at any rate, if you need to replace a section of it, I highly recommend you use plastic insulated uh, PVC type wire rated for 600 volts. This kind of stuff. You can get it in a rainbow of colors. I'm uh, trying to read the name on this. Can't quite, but you want to make sure you use stuff that's rated for 600 volts. A lot of the wiring I'm seeing floating around out there is rated for 300. That is not sufficient. You do have voltages uh, upwards of 400 volts in this set. You really want to go with the 600 volt stuff. Uh, I recently bought a bunch of spools, I think, from DigiKey. Probably made by Alpha. It's one of the more... Uh, well-known wire suppliers. So this is, it's rather than being two layers, single layer PVC, plastic insulation, um, so exactly the same type of wire inside, tin plated copper wire. Let's see if I can see the gauge on this. I'm pretty sure it's 22. Rated for 105 degrees Celsius, 600 volts. 22, yes, 22 AWG, I might have said 24 earlier. 22 is what most of the wiring is. 20 is used for the filament supply because you have higher current running to the tube filaments. You may occasionally see some plastic insulated wiring, especially on the newer sets, or some of the wiring coming out of the, some, some of the components themselves. For example, the audio output transformer, the vertical output transformer, have long leads coming directly out of the transformer going off. Those are plastic insulated. Hopefully you don't have to replace those because those are <laughs> sort of part of the uh, component itself. But you could splice them in if you had to. If you do need to make a splice, I would uh, recommend you put heat shrink tubing over it. Uh, let's see, what else? So that covers the majority of the wiring you see here. There are a few specialty wires. One of the special wires goes to the volume control. It's shielded coax, sort of, except there's two conductors inside. They go to the volume control. I don't know of a replacement source for that. Hopefully you would never need to, but just be aware there are two insulated wires that are then covered in an insulated shielding. Three wires come out of the end. One is going to the braided shielding that gets grounded. The other two go to the volume control. Uh, another specialty one is on the tuner that has an RCA connector on the end. Again, coax. This, I think you could replace with 75 ohm type coax, put an RCA connector on the end. The end going into the set, it's just hardwired in with the braided shielding going right to the IF shield and the inner conductor going to the IF board. There we go. 
Uh, another specialty uh, wire is the actual input to the tuner. Very, very, very commonly available back in the day. This is 300 ohm twin lead. It was used at everybody's house to, to a rooftop antenna or running around the house to distribute a signal. Really easy to find. You can buy it in huge spools of Radio Shack. A lot of hams made their dipole antennas out of it. Now it's a little hard to find. Uh, luckily, from a recent estate, I did get a giant spool of it from Amphenol, which I never realized was the American Phenolic Corporation. And this is what it looks like. If you look around, it's still pretty widely available. It's just not going to be... I don't know if Mauser or DigiKey carries it, but if you go onto eBay or Amazon or just ask around, I mean, most guys who are into this hobby have a stash of it. Well, worst case scenario, you can always salvage wiring out of an, uh, an old TV. Uh, most of them uh, have a hunk of that somewhere inside to distribute the uh, input signal from the antenna. Now, on the ends of these, there are little tubular connectors, and those slide in to the antenna connections on the back of the set. They slide into these, and then these screw terminals are where you would feed your signal in. I do not know of a source for these guys. Looks like a kind of a specialty bent piece of sheet metal. But for the tubular bits, uh, I've found a few things work. One, if you just break the pins off of an octal tube, uh, they are about the right diameter. Otherwise, uh, Molex pins seem to work pretty well. Uh, actually, these are a little smaller, but notice there is uh, some room to crimp this down. So you could squeeze this and then an octal pin would fit in. So if you have a dud tube, break up the base. You can suck the solder out of this and feed the the lead in from your uh, twin axe and then uh, slide this into that. That's if you wanted to make it look and work like it did originally. Of course you could just strip the end of these and solder it to, the, to that or or some such. I've seen a lot of ugliness. One of the reason I, I focused on this and I've explored it is uh, in a lot of these sets I've seen these really chewed up where these are cut off, they're frayed, they're twisted, they are electrical tape wrapped around them so I spent some time investigating how they could be fabricated. Uh, one pain with these, though, is notice this one is nice, and uh, they split the leads apart and cleaned off the excess webbing between the two wires. When you get it, it just comes like this. If you want to separate those two, if you get a paper hole punch that uh, is the right diameter, you can make a nice, neat cutout like this. Otherwise, you can use a sharp X-Acto knife, razor blade, and uh, trim it out. Oh, what else? Well, let's get right to the trickiest wires. Those would be the ones carrying the higher voltages. There's one going up into the CRT. This guy that carries the high voltage going to the anode and it plugs right into the base of the rectifier tube. That is your anode lead. You want to use something rated for, I'd say, 25,000 volts, at least 20. It has about 16,000 on it normally, but it's nice to have some overhead. You can buy it. I believe Belden. Um, I don't know if they're still in business, but most of the high voltage wire I see out there is from Belden. You can buy it by the foot. Again, I think you'd have better luck on eBay or asking around the community than going to a major parts vendor. Because if they do carry it, I imagine it's going to be quite expensive. Or another very common way to get it, again, is to salvage from a TV. Or in this case, I found somebody selling these surplus somewhere some years ago. However, one thing to note with this type is there is a thing inside this lump. There's something a lot of sets added, and that is there's a resistor in there. The reason for it is, imagine this high voltage cup fell off of the pitcher tube and shorted against something. That is a current limiting resistor. 
It's there to prevent, prevent your flyback from burning out from excessive load. Uh, I'm not sure if predictors have it or, or not. Sometimes the resistors are hidden underneath the high voltage rectifier socket. But it certainly wouldn't hurt if you use this and left that in there. It'll drop the voltage by a minimal amount. But uh, nothing to be concerned about. A final thing to note about the anode lead is what's on the other end. It does not have that suction cup. It just has a spring little clip thing. That, uh, that's how they did it. Uh, and they weren't alone. Uh, I guess it was to save a few pennies on a rubber boot. However, you can certainly use one that has a rubber boot. In fact, it'll work better if you use this type because you get a little bit of insulation. I've certainly seen these where there is um, some arcing because uh, cigarette tar and dust build up enough to form a conductive path. So it doesn't hurt to clean up that area and put one with a suction cup over it if you're going to go that far. Now, of course, it does require dismantling the entire CRT head unit, so only do it if you really need to. But just in case you're wondering what actually is on the end of this wire going up into the CRT, that's what. All right, another bit of wire that uh, gave me a headache when I was doing this one. So on this CRT, the um, the cable for the yoke was horribly deteriorated. It had been cut and spliced, so I had to redo the entire thing. But I could tell that some of the wires were different than the others. Some of them were this same type of wiring used throughout, but there were two in particular that were heavier. Well, I determined those were for the horizontal winding on the yoke. Those have a bit of a kick to them when that electron beam is flying back and forth. You want to use wire that's rated for higher voltage. Not 20,000 like the anode, but more like 5,000. Well, I hunted around for a while. It took me, took me a bit to find some and finally realized that, hey, the best wire to use for that kind of intermediate high voltage application is test lead wire. The same stuff that is typically used in your multimeter test leads. And that's exactly why they sell this stuff, is so you can make your own. Uh, it's made by Pomona, the, the test equipment folks. So Pomona sells the wire that they use in their own test leads, so you can make up your own, like banana jacks or probes or whatnot. I think these are rated for... Uh, it doesn't say... I think they're rated for 5,000 volts. Let's see what it say on here. Oh, but there you go. Pomona Electronics, 6734-0, black test lead wire, 50 feet, 18 gauge. The wire gauge is a bit heavier than what's needed, but hey, that's what they sell. It's a little pricey, but not horrible. I don't know, two bucks a foot, something like that, but you're not gonna need a whole lot. So where is it used? There is one wire running from the flyback and down, makes a loop outside the shield, which I have removed right now. Normally there'd be a box over this. Notice there's an opening at the bottom. There's one wire that comes out to that opening and goes to the main board right behind the damper tube. That's one place you should use it. The other is two of the wires going into this plug, going up into the yoke. That is the black and the red. If you need to replace them, I highly recommend this wire. Readily available, very flexible, and it has the right type of insulating properties. I think that covers everything. 22 gauge, 600 volt PVC for the bulk of the wiring. If you strip this, get yourself a wire wrap tool. It's exactly like the originals that'll wrap around the post just fine. It's the same diameter. For a few of the wires, you want to use 5,000 volt wire for around the flyback and the yoke. 20,000 or better wiring for the CRT anode. Coax for the tuner to the IF board. 300 ohm twin lead for the input to the tuner and some specialty coax for the audio wire. It has two conductors inside with a grounded braid on the outside. Ah, one final thing. 
on almost every 17 inch chassis I've ever worked on, this has been broken off. What is that? It is a P shaped cable clamp. It is there to secure the cables going to the volume contrast control cluster and the one on the back of the set with your horizontal vertical hold brightness. Readily available, you can get them at Home Depot, a pack of 20 for a couple bucks, something like that. This one's a little too big, maybe one about that size would be perfect. It's, it's really nice to have, it, it keeps all the wires in place. Oh, uh, a few other areas where you might want to use that higher voltage wire is for the cap to the horizontal output tube. In this case, I need to replace it. I suspect there was an issue with this at some point, and somebody had cut it and resoldered. Because often these break off, and now it's really too short. So I'm going to feed this bit of wire in there. And then there's the wire from the flyback to the high voltage cap. Hopefully you'll never need to mess with that, but if you do, you should use some higher voltage wire. Be oh, oh, oh so careful if you ever have to take this cap off. Because it goes right into the flyback. And this brittle old wax insulated coating very easily breaks off. You flex this wire a few times, it can snap off the flyback. Then you are in for some trouble trying to reattach that to a little stub inside the flyback. That's the high voltage wiring, thin wire. It's a bit fragile. Be careful. All right, I think that is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed and got some insight out of this little talk about Predicta wiring and what types to use for replacements.